Ireland, island of the setting sun, land of legend, land of beauty, land of mystery. The people who inhabited this country thousands of years ago used sophisticated stone technology and ritual practices to enshrine their scientific and spiritual beliefs immortally in stone. Ireland retains a mystical allure, its landscape is rich in colour and life, and in every corner there is beauty. It is a land of myth, timeless stories crafted in the distant yesteryear tell of great warriors, heroes and gods. Achievements of its ancient inhabitants remain shrouded in mystery, but their monuments and myths endure. Within the borders of Ireland are some of the grandest and oldest monuments in Europe. It is a truly monumental landscape. In recent times, much has been revealed about the sophistication of the prehistoric peoples of Ireland. Evidence shows that they were much more advanced and developed than had previously been believed and the scale of their achievements was massive. Exciting and profound new discoveries have been made, some by ordinary writers and researchers. This is the story of one such amazing revelation. The High Man was discovered by Drogheda artist Richard Moore, who has spent a lifetime painting the monuments and landscapes of the Boyne Valley. Richard is fascinated by Ireland's ancient history and has long held a vigorous interest in the Stone Age heritage of the Boyne. Being just 10 minutes drive from his home in Drogheda, sites such as Nowth and Newgrange have featured in dozens of his paintings. I was trying to find my way to Kildamock. And the roads around Kildamock and RD seemed to look like a head shape, a very good profile of a head. And when I noticed this, I remembered that Amigan was called Amigan of the Bright Knee back in Drogheda. So I was thinking, knee, head. Too much of a coincidence. So as a result of that, we st myself and Anthony started to look into this uh, figure on the roads a lot more. I was talking to a local historian and she, about this figure, and I mentioned the, the area of this Fairard thing, and she said, do you not know what that means? And I said, why, what does it mean? She said, it means high man, or tall man. And I said, wow, because the figure was actually bounded that whole area that we call the High Man is bounded by the rivers, the Dee and the Boyne. The Boyne is Ireland's foremost river in terms of its mythical and historic significance. It was onto these shores that the builders of Newgrange came in from the sea. It was along these banks that some of the greatest monuments were built and some of the most fantastic legendary happenings occurred. The Boyne is a cosmic river of sorts, having the same name as the Milky Way whose myriad of twinkling stars were seen in ancient times as a heavenly river. Near the mouth of the Boyne, overlooking the sea, are two large standing stones, placed here deep in prehistory. The larger of the two stones, which is nearly two metres high, has a flat edge which points to Rockabill, an island out in the Irish Sea. 
This is where the sun rises on winter solstice. So Baltray shares a unique solstice link with Newgrange, further upstream in the valley of the Milky Way. Millmount occupies a spectacular position overlooking the Boyne River and the ancient town of Drogheda. Folklore has it that the mound of Millmount is at least as old as Newgrange and that it is the burial place of Amergin, leader of the Milesians, who came to Ireland in prehistory to take it from the Tuatha de The Milesians landed in the Boyne estuary. It was here that Amergin put his foot on the shore and chanted his famous lines. Who but I knows the place where the sun sets? Who but I knows the ages of the moon? What land is better than this island of the setting sun? Amergin's nickname was Gluengal, which means bright knee. It is significant that Millmount marks the position of a star known today as Rigel, the bright knee of Orion. in the Boyne Valley pretty much all my life and one thing that's fascinated me since I was young was that people have lived in this valley for 6,000 years and maybe even more and the evidence would show that from the very earliest times in this valley there was a scientifically adept community of people who enshrined their science and their spiritual beliefs monumentally in stone. Their remnants survive today, millennia after they were first constructed. It really is an extraordinary achievement. Douth is probably the oldest of the three great Boyne Valley Passage Mounds, 
Although it looks like a seemingly thrown together mix of stones and earth, it is in fact a complicated astronomical observatory. The legend of Douth says that it was built on the command of the King of Ireland, whose name was Bressel. Bressel brought all the men of the country here to build him a tower from which he could pass to heaven. In order for the task to be completed in one day, the king's sister worked a magic spell on the sun to stay its course in heaven. But the two committed incest, and there was a sudden darkness which descended upon the place. The men of Ireland departed, having pledged only to work for one day on the task. And the legend says that afterwards, forevermore, the place would be called Duad, darkness. These giant curbstones encircle Douth, just like they do at Nouth and Newgrange. The number of stones here is estimated to be 115, which is a very interesting number. It is half of the number of lunar months in an 18.6 year cycle of the moon. It seems from the legend and the construction of the site that Douth may have been used in the calculation of lunar eclipses. Newgrange is Ireland's most famous Stone Age monument. It was constructed over 5,000 years ago. On the dawn of winter solstice, a beam of light from the rising sun penetrates the roof box above the entrance, down through the long, narrow corridor into the central chamber. Newgrange may also have been used as an observatory for tracking the movement of the moon and the planets. Legend says that the Tuatha Dé Danann chief, Lú, who gives his name to County Louth, where most of the High Man figure is located, appeared at Newgrange in a dream to Dechtana. Thus, the child Satanta was conceived. Satanta later became Cúchulainn, the supreme champion of Irish mythology. Cúchulainn's territory is that of the High Man, Moorhevna Plain, stretching from the Boyne River in the south to the Castletown River in the north. Cúchulainn was described as a huge high hero, and many passages in the Tawn appear to identify him with that most illustrious of constellations, Orion. Nouth is one of Ireland's supreme archaeological treasures. 
It is one of the most multifaceted ancient sites in the world, and excavations at this monument complex took four decades to complete. On its stones are carved the intricate etchings of a society seemingly fascinated with the heavens. At Nauth, one can see suns and moons and stars, a plethora of cosmic art picked out meticulously on hundreds of stones. Nauth has two deep stone corridors. One, like Newgrange, opens into a cruciform chamber. Both would have accepted light from rising and setting suns at important times in the year, which coincide with the apparently complicated lunar cycles. The number of curbstones at Nauth is important too. 127 stones multiplied by two might make the 254 sidereal lunar months in a 19-year metonic cycle of the moon. Again, there is a complex cosmology underlying its apparently simplistic design. Slane is most famous as being the location where St. Patrick lit the Paschal fire, announcing the flame of Christianity to the people of Ireland, in direct contravention of the laws of the King at nearby Tara. Woven into St. Patrick's story is significant cosmic mythology. He comes from the east as a spiritual warrior and follows an equinox line towards Croke Patrick in the west where he battles with the demons and the snakes. Is St. Patrick also the high man? Behind the Christian ruins on the hill, there is a large mound, said to be the burial place of an ancient king called Slaunia. This is probably another passage tomb, like Newgrange, Nauth and Douth, which are visible in the valley below. Today, Mount Oriel is home to modern communications equipment. In ancient times, many monuments were built on hilltops, as if the culture that built them was trying to reach towards the heavens. Perhaps they too used hilltops for communication. A fire here on Mount Oriel could be seen as far away as the Hill of Tara to the south, or Granard to the west, and Schlieve Gullion to the north. Mount Oriel is the location of a cluster of barrows. These ancient monuments form part of a very special alignment, which starts at St Bridget's birthplace at Fohart in North Louth, and runs through Mount Oriel and the hills of Slane and Tara, and on towards the Curra, the plain 
located near where St. Bridget founded her monastery. One of the most famous battles of Irish myth is the epic duel between Cuchulain and his friend Ferdia, fought along the banks of the River Dee, here in RD. The fight lasted for three days before Cuchulain finally vanquished his foe. Cuchulain was famed for fighting in ford water, often using his magical spear, the Gay Bulga, to bring death to his enemy. It is more than coincidental that the High Man figure appears to stand in a river as if replicating that giant hero of the Tawn. RD takes its name from O Ferdia, the Ford of Ferdia, after the slain hero and the tragedy of the Tawn, in which the two sworn brothers are forced to fight to the death. The imposing Castle Guard Mount here on the outskirts of RD takes its name from Koshal Guhard, the stone fort of the High Voice. It is located at the forehead of the High Man. It may well be of the same antiquity as Newgrange and the Boyne Valley monuments. You may not even be able to see it from here, but up there at the edge of that hayfield is Garrett's Fort. Although Garrett's Fort appears to be an ordinary ring fort or rath, it has an extraordinary myth attached to it. That legend says that under the ring fort in a secret chamber lies a sleeping army with Earl Garrett at their head, waiting to be roused for the last great battle. They will be awakened by a red-haired, six-fingered hero who will come and pull a sword from the wall of the chamber. Other variations of the story say the army's commander is none other than Finn McCool, or one of the two Hadadanan chiefs, said to be waiting in the chambers and rats of Ireland for the last great war, in which they will come out and fight for the country's glory. Garrett's fort is located near the mouth of the high man. Is it his voice that will rouse the sleeping army.
The so-called Jumping Church of Kildemach takes its name from this, a wall of stone said to have jumped from its foundations. As you can see, the wall leans quite considerably. Folklore has it that it was blown off its foundations during a storm. Another variation of the legend says that an unbaptized soldier was buried within the walls of the church and that this wall moved so that his grave would be without. Hidden among the trees is Motalu, said to be the burial place of the Tuhadadanan king, Lu Lawfada, Lu of the Long Arm. Its position above the high man figure marks the spot where the sun, moon, and planets cross the ford of the Milky Way. Lu gives his name to County Louth, where much of the high man figure is located. Lu's father was Cian, who, in one of the tragic tales of Irish myth, was killed by the sons of Turin on Morhevna Plain. Lu's son, of course, was none other than the warrior Cúchulán. It is interesting that the name Lu Lovefada could mean light of the steady hand. The time of year when Orion grasped the sun in his hand would have been considered a very important date. imposing ruins are all that remains of Mellifont Abbey, which was at one time the largest Cistercian Abbey in Ireland. The name Mellifont means honey well or fountain of honey. Magmel was one of the ancient names for the Irish paradise located among the stars. Other names included Tirnan Og, the land of youth, and Tirnan Mio, the land of the ever-living ones. The location of Mellifont on the high man figure is suggestive of the mysterious Orion Nebula. Perhaps the ancients saw the Orion Nebula as being Necton's well from which the Milky Way flowed. And so our fascinating journey through these ancient sites comes to an end. We're unsure of the meaning of the High Man, but its reappearance comes at an interesting time, coinciding with Orion grasping the sun on summer solstice, the longest day of the year. We hope that the High Man mystery will encourage a greater awareness of our heritage and the fact that every site, however insignificant it seems, may play a role in a much grander scheme. 
After all, these sites have lasted for hundreds and in some cases thousands of years. We should cherish them enormously so that future generations can enjoy them as we have done.